virtual reality and telecom? Well, it's here. At least uh, one Dutch provider is using it. Sean, why don't you tell us what this provider is using virtual augmented reality for? Sure. So, so KPN, they are focused on, from a field services standpoint, they're in, end user and in, in, uh, technicians that are out in the field servicing the towers as well as uh, in, inside building uh, network facilities for each of their uh, telecom locations. So that's what they're doing, uh, utilizing the application. It, it serves up their uh, work orders for the given day, where they need to go, what they need to do, whatever the maintenance that may need to be supplied uh, to each of those different facilities or each of those different um, towers that are being completed for that day. So basically they get their work orders up on their screen. Up on their screen, right out of their view, uh, in what we call a glanceable format. So it's sitting up there right above their right eye, and if they're using uh, Google Glass or if they're using the Vuzix M100s, it serves up that data um, right there in their field of view as they need it. They can glance for it and then go back to performing their work, and then when they get to the next step that they need to perform, they can glance up again and get the information that they need. So in fact, they can almost get training on demand or maybe refreshers on demand. That's correct. And in fact, what we also have them do is they have the ability to store short videos as part of those work orders, as refreshers of someone else that's performed the work in the past, showing them exactly how to do it. So it's a more of a best practice type solution where they can use it as a reference. And so it, it helps um, speed the learning curve of new employees as they come on, uh, as they come on to perform the work. Do you also see them recording the sessions as well, so that way they can get feedback? We do. In some cases, they will record it, especially if it's a uh, one of their expert technicians. We'll go out and, s and record it and supply it as part of that um, as part of that library for future use. But we also see them record it. Uh, for auditing purposes so that they can prove that they've done the work and show it and buy it off as they go on to their next task. And now you guys take the data that's in the company's database and bring it up to these devices, is that right? We do. So we connect into their back-end systems, whatever system is supplying their work order or the back-end data about the particular devices that may may need repair or maintenance on them. We take that data using our add-in SDK supply that then information we supply that information back up through onto the smart devices through the skylight platform it sounds like this is really just getting started though right it, it is it really is this is uh, a number of companies are on the bleeding edge of this um, but they are seeing huge benefits and productivity and savings right 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 in the infancy of this technology so do you have to be a huge provider like kpn to benefit from this no, no, not at all. Um, basically, anyone that has field service, uh, field service technicians uh, can benefit from this for di uh, distrib distributing their work orders and as well as saving time and increasing productivity. Excellent. Well, Sean, thank you very thank much. Thank you. It's nice Thanks. meeting you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Nice.